what are the dark secrets of each personality type. The things that are often true about them that they wouldn't want you to know. Things they wouldn't want to admit or reveal. Perhaps because those revelations would shock people or because it might completely contradict how most people see them. As always in these types of videos, there are huge generalizations. And given the fact that I'm pretty sure this audience has a disproportionate amount of dark secrets, more than one will undoubtedly apply. ESTP could have done more. Pound for pound, ESTPs enjoy life more than most people. Pretty much at any given point, if you were to, like an omnipresent narrator, peer into an ESTP's life, they are probably having more fun than you. They are masters of the moment, but that is just one way to measure a life. What they often gain from their ability to eke out the maximum amount of pleasure, fun, and excitement from the here and now often comes at the expense of them not truly maximizing their potential, not reaching the heights that they could. Reaching the pinnacle of your own personal capabilities often necessitates sacrificing pleasure in the moment, embarking on a long and boring grind lots of the time. So for ESTPs, they secretly wonder whether it would have been better to commit to something and sacrifice for it. On the flip side of that, ESTPs who are on a long-term path towards something will often have the opposite worry about whether it's going to be worth it. ISTP, nihilistic. If you were to think of the most rational personality types, maybe the NTs would be the first types that came to mind. I would give that title to the ISTPs. When it comes to seeing things accurately, realistically, and without unnecessary assumptions, they're the best. When you're possessed of such an unromantic view of the world, it allows you to see that life is kind of annoying. More than that, people are also very annoying. There's a lot of injustice and unfairness, and that is the cold, harsh reality that needs to be accepted if you want to navigate through life well. To be devoid of undue preconceptions is actually a gift. It makes them the ultimate pragmatists. But it can also lead to some nihilistic beliefs about the world. I think that a secret that ISTPs keep to themselves often, and one that may quite surprise the people in their lives, is that they can be quite unattached to, well, everything. Even in the most horrific situations, you can find ISTPs simply saying, with a shrug, it is what it is. Or more likely some kind of dark humoured one-liner. INFJs. Colder than you think. One of the most lauded skills of the INFJ type is their empathetic insight. Their ability to assume another person's point of view, both in terms of their emotional landscape and their way of thinking. They're often quite gentle in their demeanour and come across as very warm. One of the unexpected consequences of being so perceptive and sensitive to the emotional states of other people is that you neglect your own. If things get out of hand in this regard, it can lead to a strong feeling of hollowness. Like they are in touch with everyone else around them, but not with themselves. Behind the well-calibrated social skills lies a much colder, analytical mind at work, equally concerned with studying people as much as helping them. ENFJs. The whole truth. ENFJs in practice definitely live up to the stereotype of wanting to maintain harmony. They can be the ultimate politicians and go-betweens when they want to be, knowing the precisely formatted sentence to diffuse even the most contentious situations. They're so good at this that other people won't even realise that they're doing it. This brings up the question of, if you could hear the completely unfiltered and unsoftened thoughts of an ENFJ, what would they say? What would happen if they opened the vault of secrets? Well, I think that ENFJs often wrestle with knowing the right thing to say to settle things down and bring about the greater good, and simply giving people the unadulterated truth regardless of the consequences of it. So the dark secret of the ENFJ is simply that their true opinions of people might be a lot more harsh and unforgiving than people would expect. In fact, people might be completely shocked to hear them. ISTJs. Uncertain. Anyone that has an ISTJ in their life will typically see them as strong, stable, and solid. Often the people you want in your corner when life gets a bit crazy and chaotic. They're almost wired to bring about stability, to turn chaos into order, and they do this expertly. They're also rarely lacking in forwardness when it comes to expressing their views on how things should be done or run. This can give them something of a reputation as being control freaks or overly rigid people too concerned with the rules. What this masks and what ISTJs would consider a secret they could reveal is that internally they don't have any more certainty about things than anyone else. In fact, this stern and stubborn demeanour is something of a reaction to their fear about the uncertainty in the world. They want to protect against negative outcomes and futures, to protect themselves and the people close to them. So their unshakable rock-solid attitude towards life is inextricably linked to their fear of certain aspects of it. ESTJs. Soft, 
underbelly. ESTJs, almost without exception, come across as strong, sometimes too strong and forceful. Taking charge is natural to them, since organizing is a major skill of theirs, so they can genuinely advise people well on how to do things better. Because of this perception of them, because people are likely to feel strong-armed and steamrolled by them, people rarely feel empathy for them. It's difficult to even conceive of the notion that they themselves might be struggling. It is the curse of strong people to never be offered help or worse still, to never ask for it. Something that ESTJs may keep secret is the extent to which they might be feeling weak or fragile at certain periods of their life. ESFJs, relationship dependent. ESFJs invest a great deal of time and effort into their relationships. They can often bring out the best in other people, nurturing and encouraging them, both believing in them and supporting them when other people might not be. Because this is their main strength, it's something they can become reliant and dependent on. The quality of their relationships, the breadth of their social circle, and their social status in general. These can all be things they take too much pride in. Suddenly, they're stuck in a situation where they're trying to maintain a vast social circle and might just like ENFJs, bite their tongue too much and not say what they really think. On the flip side of that, they might be overly sensitive to criticism in those relationships because they want everything to be harmonious and perfect. So a dark secret of the ESFJs would be that, along with being masters of relationships, they're also dependent on them as well. ISFJs. Underestimated. ISFJs often have a gentle energy. They have a compassionate and tender nature. This, like all things, comes at a cost. There are times in life where it's important to be assertive and even aggressive. Times where you need to set a boundary firmly and uncompromisingly. Times where you have to lean into contentious and combative situations. Times where humility is a disadvantage. ISFJs are usually capable people. This is because they are excellent analyzers and system creators in their life. Given time and space to learn, they'll master almost anything they aim their minds at. These two traits and tendencies are in conflict with each other. Being both capable and impressive operators, but reserved when promoting their own skills, or upsetting the apple cart when they aren't getting the credit or indeed the respect they deserve. A dark secret of ISFJs might be that they often see themselves as far more capable and competent than the people around them, and feel a strong sense of annoyance about being underestimated and overlooked. This video is sponsored by You're My Type. An app that makes finding friends and dating more meaningful by using personality types to match people. Check it out if you want to connect, chat and meet with people or just enjoy the memes. It's available on both iOS and Android and is completely free to download. ENTPs. We do care. More or less. ENTPs could be in a weird category where their so-called dark secret might actually be that they are nicer than most people think. One stereotype of ENTPs is them being debate lords who constantly get the best of people dialectically, seemingly enjoying the verbal battle for its own sake, which has a lot of truth to it. In addition to this, their ability to see endless perspectives means that settling down on one fixed position or opinion isn't something they're inclined to do. However, they do have opinions and principles ones that they believe in strongly and will defend even if it's unpopular or makes them look bad. For people who know them as typically being devil's advocates, it can be quite surprising to see them suddenly take a principled stand for or against something. You could even make the case that they're at their best when defending a specific point of view authentically, as opposed to doing it purely rhetorically. INTP. Super geniuses. I think a good barometer for intelligence, or perhaps intellectual integrity, is the extent to which a person doubts themselves. To think independently is to question both yourself, but also the self-proclaimed intellectual authorities too. It's to take each puzzle, problem, and thoughtful expedition on a case-by-case -case basis. Just because your or someone else's track record is favourable doesn't mean that you or they are correct right now. You are constantly assuming a humble, beginner's mindset in order to maintain that dedication to precision, accuracy and truth. Based on this, INTPs will often secretly doubt their own intelligence. Even when other people hold them in a high regard in this respect, they'll assume that the other person is mistaken. Or ironically, they might see anyone who views them as intelligent as stupid for doing so. Considering it's often what they pride themselves on, a dark secret of the INTP is that they are endlessly doubting and second-guessing themselves simultaneously aiming to reach creative and cerebral heights, yet secretly seeing themselves as intellectual imposters. ENTJ. 
externalized identity. This one is very much in line with the stereotype and probably won't surprise anyone. ENTJs are often achievement driven. They want to get things done. They want to have metrics to measure outcomes and they want those outcomes to be impressive and valuable. This comes with a danger and drawback that they'll often feel but will rarely talk about. Their enjoyment of achievement can lead to a dependence on it. They're all too often people for whom what they do and who they are is the same thing. The most obvious danger is that you externalize your identity and self-worth. So perhaps a dark secret ENTJs would share, were they in an honest mood, would be that without those achievements, they don't feel as confident or charismatic and might even have a void or hollowness without them. INTJs. Machiavellian. It is always comical to see an archetypical INTJ villain in fiction, but there is a reason why it's so common. In their darkest moments, they can be out of touch with their own, for want of a better word, humanity. Those are the times where people look most like pieces on a chessboard to them. I would go as far as to say that most INTJs encounter situations on a regular basis where they could make use of this ability. It's a temptation that crosses their minds. They can use their skill set and cognitive makeup to maneuver situations and people to their advantage. They can get what they want by devious means. I don't think it's a well-kept secret that INTJs have this ability, but perhaps the extent to which they hold back from using it would shock people. ISFP, isolation and anger. Certain types are more susceptible to feeling outcast or like they just don't belong. ISFPs are one of those types. They aren't often portrayed this way, but I've always seen them as very rebellious and iconoclastic types. People who will be quite quick to push back against any kind of force being exerted upon them and possess a strong anti-authority streak. They are emotionally charged people who can be passionate, intense, spirited, but also temperamental, moody, and potentially volatile. They are just as likely to push back against people as they are to push people away. I think ISFPs often hide how much they desire getting away at times, simply taking a break from everything, isolating just to recenter themselves and process their emotions without all of the infuriating distractions and triggers that exist in day-to-day -day life. ESFPs. So changeable. ESFPs have a double whammy of being indulgent and impulsive, yet also emotional and mercurial. A strange combination of eternal movement and moodiness. When possessed of a strong emotional urge, their focus on it can be intense and all-consuming. Nothing else feels more important to them in that moment. But if or when that changes, then suddenly something else becomes the most important thing. At times, this can feel like a pinball bouncing around in an emotional whirlwind. It can be exhausting for them and will rob them of having direction in their life. Even when they do have direction, it's still something that they struggle with. It is part of their gift, though, that they can be driven by beliefs and values. Ones that spur them on and are infinitely more powerful than so many of the conventional motivations. Nonetheless, although you wouldn't guess it from the level of passion they show, this changeability is definitely something that bothers them. ENFPs cynicism. To interact with an ENFP most of the time is to be energized by their presence and entertained by their humor and eternally fresh perspective on pretty much everything and anything. They can have a sparkling quality lots of the time. A problem associated with their archetype is going from the conceptual to the concrete. From the joyous brainstorming where everything is pregnant with possibilities to the limited and compromised nature of implementation. As time goes on and they experience this cycle of reality disappointing them, it can result in a strong leaning towards being cynical. This is particularly ironic given how optimistic and hopeful they can be so much of the time. If this gets to an extreme point where they are completely cynical, then that's a very dangerous thing for them indeed. Perhaps even more so for all of the people who would lose out on their inspirational and motivating nature. INFP. Dark and disillusioned. Cute and cuddly is the initial perception of INFPs. People who are eternally hopeful and idealistic about life and people. Particularly in fiction, INFP characters are the ones who never give up or stop believing that things can work out well and that the good guys will win. In reality though, they can become deeply disenchanted and disillusioned with many things. After all, one of the only guarantees we have in life is suffering and difficulty. 
so it's everywhere you look. In the face of that, it's difficult to avoid feeling soured or downcast. So despite their hopeful disposition, they will often hide the fact that they're feeling this way. One of the ironies with the INFP stereotype is that they're often described as being melancholy or even depressed. But in reality, they are far more likely to be guarded about their feelings and suppress them. Hiding the extent of their dark thoughts and their negative feelings is something they're definitely susceptible to. My personal dark secret is that I really want you to like and subscribe and join the Love Who Discord server. Feel free to do all three.